After nine hours of uninterrupted labour, the earth was dug from the vault, the solid masonry removed, and a heavy slab which covered the internal sarcophagus was lifted by means of a crane. Prayers were offered, and with uncovered heads, the coffin was carefully raised and conveyed to a tent which had been prepared for its reception. With religious awe, the three coffins of mahogany, lead and tin were opened, and, upon carefully lifting a white satin veil, the body of the emperor was exposed to view. The remains had been so effectually protected from dampness and the air, that, to the surprise of all, the features of the emperor were so little changed that he was instantly recognised by those who knew him when he was alive. His military dress exhibited but slight decay and he reposed in marble beauty as if he were asleep. The emotion experienced by all was deep and unutterable. Many burst into tears. The hallowed remains were exposed to the external air less than two minutes. The coffins were again closed and soldered with the utmost care and were then placed in the massive ebony sarcophagus which was brought from Paris and which was also protected by a strong box of oak. Clouds darkened the sky, the rain fell in torrents, dense sheets of mist enveloped the crags in almost midnight gloom and a dismal tempest wailed its dirges over the gloomy rock. Guns from the forts and from the ships in the harbour blended their thunders with the sublime requiem of the ocean and of the sky. Nearly all the inhabitants of St Helena, regardless of the deluging storm, were at the grave and followed in the procession from the tomb to the ships. The funeral car was drawn by four horses, each led by a groom, while eight officers walked by the side of the hearse. All the military, naval and civil authorities of the island accompanied the remains, with crepe on the left arm. And, by the express invitation of the governor, all the gentlemen of the island were invited to attend in mourning. The whole military force of St Helena, consisting of the regular soldiers and the militia, were also called out to honour the event, in which repentant England surrendered Napoleon to France. As the vast procession wound slowly around the rocks, the most soul-subduing dirges of martial bands blended with the solemn booming of minute guns and the roar of the elements. The streets of Jamestown were surrounded in crepe, the yards of the shipping apeak and all their flags at half-mast. Napoleon went down into the tomb, denounced as a usurper. He emerged from it after the slumber of twenty years, acknowledged an emperor. At the quay where the English lines terminated, the French officers, all in deep mourning, stood in reverential silence with heads uncovered. The car stopped within a few paces of the mourning group. The Governor-General of St Helena then advanced and, in the name of the British government, surrendered to France the remains of the Emperor. The coffin was then received beneath the folds of the French flag, exciting emotions in the bosoms of all present, such as cannot be described. From that moment, the same honours which the Emperor had received while living were paid to his mortal remains. Banners were unfurled and the salutes were fired as the coffin was conveyed in a cutter accompanied by a retinue of boats to the ship. It was received on board between two ranks of officers under arms. It was then placed in a consecrated chapel constructed for the purpose and illuminated with waxen lights. A guard of 60 men, commanded by the oldest lieutenant, rendered to the remains imperial honours. 
the ladies of St. Helena had offered as a homage to the memory of the emperor, a rich banner embroidered with their own hands. This graceful token from the ladies was suspended in the chapel. The affecting scenes of the day were closed by the appropriate observance of those religious rites which the serious spirit of the emperor had so deeply revered. The vessel sailed from St Helena on the 18th of October, just 25 years and three days from the time when Napoleon was landed upon the island as a captive.